Almost four years ago, whilst filming a series for Disney+, Plus, I fell 300 feet, just over 90 meters, down a mountain in the Italian Alps, breaking in multiple places my neck, my spine, my pelvis, well, pretty much everything, ultimately resulting in an eight-day coma and a drastic change in lifestyle going forward. With that being almost four years ago, I have obviously recovered a lot in many ways since then, but much of the fallout from that day is ongoing and or lifelong, and one of these issues is my leg. Whilst I can stand and walk unaided for a bit, for example if I'm just walking from one room to another in my house, or if I'm just doing a quick standing shot for you guys, if I need to stand or walk for longer periods it can cause issues, so when I'm out the house I tend to use one or two crutches. I don't normally use them whilst actively filming, but you may have noticed them lying around in the background in previous videos. A while back I released a simple design for customizable tags that you could clamp onto your crutches allowing you to personalize them a bit, and I have several useful crutch mods and accessories on the way. As Maker Central, which is going to involve a lot of walking, began to approach, and as my legs not been so good recently, I knew that I was going to want some sort of walking aid whilst there, but I also knew that I wanted something that felt a bit more me than my standard hospital issue crutches, even if they are sporting the 3D Rev logo. So I decided to design and 3D print my own 3D Revolution walking cane, ready for use at Maker Central. Once I decided on an appropriate height for my cane, I designed what I thought was an appropriate cane for an event like Maker Central, featuring a screwdriver complete with screw, a stack of spools of 3D printer filament, and a pile of 3D printers. Now, the height that I decided on for the cane is nearly a meter, and being that I don't have a delta printer which can print at that height, yet, I divided the main shaft of the cane into three sections, plus the handle and the TPU foot. Each section has a printed threaded screw built into the design, extending out of one end, with a threaded hole at the opposite end allowing the whole thing to screw together. Now at this stage I had planned to use a 5mm carbon fibre rod as a reinforcement spine, and so I had left a hole through the entire design to accommodate this. I printed it out in one colour and low infill, just as a quick test to check that I was happy with the size and design before committing to a much longer, full strength multicolour print. I was really happy how the test print came out and all fitted together, however, as I was tightening up the handle, at the point that the screw met the handle part, it delaminated and split off. Now I'd possibly naively assumed that this was due to the low infill and wall count of this draft test print, and didn't feel that it necessitated any changes in design. In fact, quite on the contrary, I felt that the rest of this print was stronger than I'd expected, and so decided to remove the hole for the carbon fibre rod from the design. This was because I didn't feel that the rod was necessary for strength, and featuring the hole to cater for it would make the thinner parts of the design, especially the screws, extra thin. This is despite it adhering to the trick that I covered in an earlier video a couple of years ago, where adding a negative volume inside your model can actually increase its strength, as it will add additional walls around the negative volume. However, that's more for if the negative volume is closer to the outer edge of the model, so that the new walls are directly connected to the exterior walls as a continuous extrusion, and with these parts being relatively thin already, this doesn't offer a huge help. So I made a compromise. Whilst removing the hole big enough to fit the carbon fibre rod into, I kept a very small hole in the same place that would allow air to escape when screwing together to prevent any chance of air pressure buildup causing fitting issues when connected, and this then still added the additional walls down the centre. With those design changes made it was time to print it, and the full colour full strength print time came to around three and a half to four days, partly due to the amount of colour changes and partly due to the height of the prints. Each section of the cane was encased in its own shell of support material. The screwdriver and printer sections were fairly quick and simple to remove, however the filament stack section, due to having overhangs around the entire perimeter every few millimetres of height, was entirely shrouded in support material, but whilst it did take a while to remove and with the help of needle nose pliers, it was actually very easy and came away without an issue. I screwed it all together including the TPU foot and glued in the letters into the printers, I could have printed the letters as part of the main model, but that would have then added an additional 1-2 to two colour changes per layer, and the letters would have also required their own support material, so it wasn't worth the hassle. 
It looked and felt great. However, whilst testing it, and before I even got to film it for you, just like the test print, one of the screw sections connecting two of the segments snapped. I then tested the strength of the other screws on the other segments and found the exact same thing happened. They all delaminated across layer lines when put under lateral stress. With the segments all rendered useless now with their screws snapped off, I thought before continuing it would be best to test the strength of the actual lengths of cane themselves other than the screws to ensure that it wasn't just a general issue with layer bonding. The filament stack section, which featured the most layer bonds between different filaments, was super strong and wouldn't break. Whilst the printer stack was very strong, the delta printer at the bottom did snap off. Now this is at the point of a layer change between a silk PLA and a regular PLA, and it could suggest that there was an issue with these two filaments bonding. However, it did require a lot more lateral force to break this than the cane is likely going to experience in general use, so I wasn't too concerned. The real issue, other than the screws, was when strength testing the bottom section, the screwdriver. The long extrusion of the screwdriver was already thinner than any other part of the cane, and then the point at which the screwdriver met the large screw at the foot was almost as thin as the diameter of the screws that have been snapping. This part snapped both at the point that the screwdriver connected to the big screw at the base, and also at the top of the long extrusion connecting to the handle. So it was back to the drawing board again. The first of the issues to fix here was easy. I took the screwdriver and just made it fatter, therefore increasing the thickness and strength. I didn't increase the size of the base screws, so it would still fit the TPU foot that I'd already printed, which I felt was a good size for this use. The second issue, whilst similar, is slightly different. All the screws connecting the segments of the cane together are breaking, but they're all breaking across the layer lines. No matter how I printed these screws, whether they were pre-attached to the main parts of the cane as they have been so far, or if I printed them on their own upright, they're still going to present the same weak point against lateral strain on the cane. The only alternative to printing these screws upright on their ends would mean printing along their sides using tons of support material, which would almost certainly impact the effectiveness of the screw's threads. But then I realised that's not the only alternative. If I designed the screws as separate standalone parts, which would be connected to the cane post-printing, and then sheared off an area of one side, I could then print it lying flat on the print bed without the need for supports or overhangs. With it printed sideways, it means the extrusion runs lengthwise, providing significantly more strength and preventing snapping due to delamination. When fitted, these screws will only ever be placed under lateral force, unlike the rest of the cane that will be put under downward force, so this should be perfect. I did a quick test print as a proof of concept, and it works perfectly. As an added bonus, due to the sheared side of the screw leaving a gap down its entire length when being screwed in, there's no chance of it forming a seal and building up pressure, so I could completely remove the hole down the entire length of the cane. As the screws were no longer pre-fitted to the actual cane lengths, they needed to be replaced with female threads. When it came to slicing and printing this iteration, it actually shaved off a huge amount of print time, especially on the segment with the stack of 3D printers. This was because it not only reduced the overall height, but because they also had support material running the full height of these models, so it meant significantly less support was required. So with this all printed again, it's time to remove the support material again. Luckily we've got a head start as the support material for this segment came off as I was removing it from the print bed. Now let's get on to these. Well, that was definitely a bit of a journey, but I think it has come out really nicely. 
Uh, this latest version has all screwed together really solidly. The detail is really nice in it and it just works. It works really nicely. The grip on the base is really grippy. Now, I've not gone out of my way to really try and break it because that's not as a use case. I don't want to break it, but it's been doing really well uh, testing it around the house. So we'll have to see how well it fares at Maker Central. And um, I think it's about time to head to Birmingham, so I best head off. The cane was working well and doing its job as I arrived at Maker Central. Having done a quick circuit of this year's setup to get a lay of the land, the first thing that I really did was go and see Colin Furs to give him a piece of his rock wool which I'd printed him for his underground garage. Whilst screwing the mount into the back of the rock piece, with the cane just leaning against the table, I heard the base of the cane cracking. I'm not quite sure what happened, whether someone stepped on it or if the table flexed and somehow caught and twisted it, but the cane had been rock solid up to that point and suddenly the screw at the base of the screwdriver segment just snapped off. Luckily, as a last minute thought the day before, I decided to print a single colour spare part for this segment, so I sat down, removed the broken segment and just screwed the new one on. Now the problem was the TPU foot was well and truly stuck on the broken screw part and I hadn't brought a spare for that. If only there was someone here who had a tool that could grip this so we could remove it, I said to my friend Guthrie as I gazed out over the largest expo of makers from blacksmiths to roboticists in the UK. So a big thank you to the guys on the Axminster Tools stall for helping remove it. With the foot popped onto the new orange base piece, I took back to the floor to continue exploring Maker Central and meet some fantastic makers, including some of you wonderful people. For the rest of the day, which did involve quite a bit of walking, this thing was solid as a rock and it hasn't given me any issues since. So I would say for the most part, the 3D printed cane is a success. Now, as with my revolution coins, which I iterate on and hand out at Maker Central each year, I'm thinking I need to innovate new functionality into the cane each year. I've already got some fun ideas of things that I could add to it, which may or may not involve both motors and Bluetooth, but we'll have to see what comes to fruition next year. I hope you've enjoyed this fun little make. This wasn't originally intended as a video. I just decided to make this cane and then figured that some of you may be interested in its journey. And as you're still watching, I'm presuming that's the case. And thank you for joining me to the end. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. It does make a big difference to me and subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. You can also hit the join button below any of my videos to become a channel member, getting early access to my new content and a member's discount at 3drevolutionstore.com. Either way, thanks very much everyone, and until next time, happy printing. A big thank you to Guthrie for your support and your camera work at Maker Central, and a big thank you to my revolutionaries, my channel members, for your support as well. For now, why not chuck on my video where I converted a real pumpkin into a portal gun turret, a design which you can now download and print yourself ready for Halloween. Or chuck on one of my other videos to learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much everyone and until next time, happy printing.